wartime reconstruction. Reconstruction didn't wait for the war to end. As soon as the odds of a northern victory increased, thoughts turned to reunification. The debate over reconstruction started right away, as well, as both President Lincoln and Congress fought over who had the authority to devise a plan. With the war still going on, Lincoln believed that Reconstruction was an executive responsibility. He was the commander-in-chief and believed that Reconstruction was a military issue during the war. Congress, on the other hand, felt that Reconstruction was essentially a part of the peace process, and therefore under their purview. The debate wasn't just over where responsibility lay. They also disagreed about what the terms of Reconstruction should be. Lincoln, as always, worried most about restoring national unity. He was in favor of a speedy reconciliation that was forgiving of the rebels. Congress believed that gave too much power back to the slave power. It wanted assurances of white loyalty and greater guarantees of black rights. In December 1863, Lincoln offered his proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction. It offered a full pardon to rebels willing to renounce secession and to accept the abolition of slavery. His offer excluded certain groups, including high-ranking civilian and military officers, but it was designed to bring about a speedy peace and end slavery. It only required 10% of men to take an oath of allegiance before they could organize a new state government. And it didn't require ex-rebels to extend social or political rights to ex-slaves or to outline a program of long-term federal assistance to freedmen. To abolitionists, Lincoln's plan made a mockery of black freedom. It freed slaves without assisting them out of slavery. In July 1864, Congress put forward its own plan, the Wade Davis Bill. This bill raised the bar for admission back into the Union by requiring not just 10%, but fully half of the voters in a conquered rebel state to take the oath of allegiance before Reconstruction could begin. It also banned ex-Confederates from participating in the drafting of new state constitutions. Finally, the bill guaranteed the equality of freedmen before the law. This law was much less forgiving and not as quick as the Reconstruction that Lincoln envisioned. On the other hand, it didn't go nearly far enough in the minds of some radical Republicans. They wanted the bill to also guarantee black suffrage. This was something that even Lincoln himself came to endorse. In April 1865, he said in a speech that he approved of black suffrage, at least for the very intelligent and those who serve our cause as soldiers. Four days after delivering the speech, he was dead. When President Lincoln was assassinated on April 15, 1865, Congress was out of session, throwing Reconstruction into the hands of the new president, Andrew Johnson, a Southerner and a committed white supremacist. <laughs>